In one of my videos, I said never use margins on reusable components. And some of you asked the question, how do you create space then? In this video, I want to provide more context to that and also break down how to pick between margin, padding and gap because in real projects, it's not always as straightforward as it seems. Let's dive in. Let's start with a little bit of a recap. Margin is probably the most straightforward one to understand. Basically, when you add a margin to an element, browser creates space outside of that element. Here in this example, I have a single paragraph, a little bit of a reset going on. So if I start adding margins, to the paragraph like this, let's say I want to add margin block star two rems, it will push this paragraph from the edge of the screen. So pushes it from the top edge of the screen. Now, if I copy the same paragraph and put it here, the second paragraph will be pushed from the first one. Padding, on the other hand, is the space inside the element. But what does it mean exactly? Let's just try to add padding to this paragraph and see what happens. We'll just use the same value like so. Yeah, I can see that there's more space now, but it all looks the same. It's just space. So what is the difference then between margin and padding? To make it more visual, we can add a background color to this paragraph. And we'll use a light gray color like so. Okay, now it makes more sense. The space from the edge of the background color to the text is padding. And the same concept applies to borders. So if, if this paragraph had a border, something like that, the space from the border to the text is padding. So padding is the space inside the element from the edges of the element to the content of the element and margin is space outside. See how our margins remain the same. What about gap then? Gap is a newer property that allows us to create space between the items inside Flexbox or grid containers. To illustrate how it works, let's maybe copy one of the paragraphs. So we have three and wrap them in a div. Also maybe add a class to it like so define a grid here all we have to do to add space between the the columns is say gap one rem this works with flexbox as well this is super cool and concise right so does it mean that we should just start using gap everywhere well not necessarily because real life projects are much more nuanced so now i want to walk you through a more realistic example it's a layout that's mostly finished but what it doesn't have is spacing and basically we'll go through it together we'll choose margin padding or gap for each use case and we'll turn this layout that looks kind of crappy into this one that looks nice with correct spacing that's easy to read and looks amazing both code pens are in the description so if you want to turn it into an exercise you can pause the video right here add spacing yourself and then compare your code pen with mine. So obviously this layout has quite a few issues, but the one I want to fix first is the lack of spacing between the edge of the screen and the content. What I like to do um, in cases like this is create a variable that holds the value of that site gutter. And I call it something like this. And I'll use one of the tokens that I have created previously. Perfect. Now that I have the variable, I can add it to any component that I need. So I'll add it to site header, site main, and site footer. So let's go find those components. Site header is right here. So what I can do is say padding in line and paste the variable right here. Now we can see that we have spacing here and here. Perfect. Now let's just copy this, add it to, I don't think I have site main element yet. So I'll just add it here, paste it, remove extra spacing and paste it to the site footer rule as well. And we can see that we have the spacing in the header, in the main and in the footer. Perfect. So the next thing I want to address is the lack of vertical spacing in the header and the footer. And I want to use padding here as well, because I want to make sure that if I swap the elements inside header or inside footer, the padding still stays there. I am going to add padding to site header. And here I'm going to say padding block. And even if the value of the padding was the same as the site gutter, we should not use this variable here because semantically this is not correct. We should use the semantic variable name only for site gutters. And 
I'm just going to use a, um, a token here. So probably something like step four would work fine. And I'm going to do the same for the footer. And it didn't work. Padding. Yeah, because I forgot the dash here in the token name. Perfect. Now we have the vertical spacing in the header and footer. And it's already starting to look much better. Uh, you have probably noticed the lack of spacing in the navigation, but we'll get to that later in the video. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is add space between the header, the main area, and the footer. And there are multiple ways to do this. First one is to add a padding block to the site main component here. So I'm just going to do that. And I'm going to use another token here. This approach works fine. And one thing you should understand about it is that this treats this site main block in BEM terminology or site main component as a component that always has this padding. If that's what you want, perfectly fine. But sometimes you want to keep this component without padding. And in that case, let me remove this. We can add margins to site main element, not site main component, and site footer element. And that's what I meant when I said never use margins on reusable components. The idea here is that site main is the element of a site component. So if we look here, you'll notice that we have site component that's basically a container for header, main, and footer. And site has three elements, site, header, site, main, and site, footer. And the idea here is that you will never reuse site, main, class name on its own somewhere else. You should use site, main, if you want to uh, put it on another page. So it's perfectly fine to use margins on the element. So in this case, we can say margin block start and again use uh, a token like this and or six and do the same for the footer. One approach is to use padding. Another one is to use margins on the elements. So the next thing I want to fix is the lack of space between the headings and the paragraphs. We don't have vertical rhythm whatsoever. So let's address that. And what I see some engineers do in cases like this is turn the entire content area into a grid container or a flexbox container and use gap inside. So technically you could do something like this. So we have this content flow class that wraps the entire content area. So let me copy it paste here and I can say display grid and then set gap to another token. Let's say step one and it already looks much better. We have exact same space between the heading, the, the paragraph and, and, and whatnot. But there are two issues with this. First one is we turn the normal flow that we used to have here before into a grid. That might not be a huge issue, but that's another thing we should keep in mind. So how it can backfire. We don't have max width defined on the, the paragraphs and the content area. So if I were to say all elements inside the content flow area have max width of, and I have a variable for that, with content, let me go back. So all elements inside the content flow container have a max width now, and we use margin in line to center them what's going to happen is headings will now be centered because it's not a normal flow. It's a grid flow and headings are not expanding to the entire width of the container. We could fix that, but that's just another step that we could have avoided. On top of that, that's probably not the best typographic experience. There probably should be more space between where the paragraph ends and when the heading begins. So the space should not be equal between the elements inside that content flow a container. Because of that, I recommend to use margins here. And what we can do instead of creating this gap, so let me delete it here. 
we can use lobotomized owl selector. It looks almost like this, but we need to add another asterisk here. Basically, what it says is every element that is preceded by another element should have a margin block start. And then we can use the same token, just one. It looks the same at this point, but what we can do with this approach is we can overwrite some of the margins. So for example, if we copy this rule, paste it here, and instead of saying everything that is preceded by an, any element, we can say if it's an H2, then we'll use different margin block start. We can use three here. Now it looks much better. We can even use six or something like that. So where do we use gap then? You guessed it, in grids and in components where we want the space between the elements to be the same. And we happen to have a component like that here on this page. So we have this card grid where we don't have space between the elements yet, but it's a grid. So we can just use gap here. Now we have space between the elements and it looks nice and that's exactly what we want. And while we're here, let's fix the spacing inside the cards. I want to add padding around the content area. And again, I want to use padding here because I want to be able to swap the elements inside the card. Alternative approach is to add margins to the year, for example, and margin to the title. But what if title goes away? What if it becomes a different card? What if year goes away? The space goes away with it as well. So I want to avoid that. So to make it more robust, I add space to the card content that wraps the title, the description and meta. So the card content is here. What I can do is I can say padding and then use the token, something like step minus two because the cards are pretty small right there. Perfect. So the next step is to add space between the title, the artist name and the year. There are multiple ways to do this. Honestly, this depends on your project and your preferences. We could either use gap or margins. I think that margins make more sense here because again, we're not changing the flow of the element and we keep the default flow where display block elements stretch to the edges of the container. So the way we can approach this is we can either use a lobotomized owl selector here, like in the previous example and say margin block start and then use a small value like minus five. That works fine. Or alternatively, if you know that the content of the card doesn't change and you want to tweak the spacing more granularly, for example, you want to have less space between the year and the, disc and, and the artist name, you can instead just add margins to those elements. And sometimes it's more preferable where you need to have more control over the elements and visually it looks nicer. So for example, in, in our case, we can use a slightly different margin on the year than on the, on the description. I'm happy with this. Perfect. Okay, so let's get back to navigation. That's the last part of this layout that I want to fix. Obviously, we need to have space between the items. But what do we use here? Margins, paddings, or gap? Let's think. So the space between the items can be the same, right? We don't have any background and we don't have any borders around the items. So we should probably just use gap and call it a day, right? Well, you could do that, but we can also do better. So what's tricky about this component is that menu items here are clickable and focusable. And what that means is that the cursor turns into a pointer as soon as you hover over the element. Also, if you use tab navigation, items will be highlighted with an outline. Default recommended size, the minimum recommended size of clickable and focusable elements is 44 by 44 pixels. And this is a little smaller. Last time I checked, it was around 27. We can actually like check it right now. 
yeah 28 whatever so we can do better and because paddings are basically space inside the element we can increase the focusable and clickable area by using padding here so what i like to do in cases like this is add padding to the clickable element and in our case it's the let me find it In our case, it's site nav link. Very important distinction. We should add padding not to the site nav item because it will do nothing to the clickable area because it's not clickable, but to site nav link. This is very important. So let's find it and add padding to it. We can use a small value as well something like minus five. Perfect. Now we have a little bit more space between the items and if you try to use keyboard navigation, you'll notice that the focusable area and the clickable area is bigger now. And that's better for navigation items like this. I really like the projects that treat outlines nicely and always try to do it myself. I think it shows class. I think it shows that you care about the experience of the user. I'm pretty happy with it. I think we can add more space. So in this case, it makes sense to have padding on the clickable elements and add gap between them. So, so we can add gap to site nav list element and that will make the entire layout shine maybe the same value maybe something a little bigger so like maybe minus four and that will space them out maybe minus three perfect i am happy with this and that's a much better looking page i'm really happy how it turned out and i hope this video helps you learn how to think of space in css how to pick between padding margin and gap basically to recap if the element has background or if it has a border or if it's a clickable element and you want to increase the clickable area or focusable area that's a perfect use case for padding if it's a grid container and you want to add space between the elements or if it's a flexbox container you want to uh, add space between the elements and you know for a fact that that space can stay the same then it's a perfect case for gap and if you want to add space between the elements of that container and you need to have more precise control of that space and you want to be able to override that space that's perfect use case for margins i hope this video was helpful see you in the next one